Hello, welcome everyone to the McMaster Health Forum here at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario for our latest Queen Elizabeth Scholarship presentations. Here is an agenda for uh, what we will be uh, covering today. Uh, I will give you a quick little summary of the McMaster Health Forum, uh, the actual scholarship program, and then what that scholarship program looks like here at the forum. I will in then introduce you to our scholar presenters, and then we'll have a question period at the end. If you are watching this later on YouTube, the two scholar presenters will be split into two different uh, YouTube videos and the questions will not be recorded. So the McMaster Health Forum uh, is the leading hub for improving health outcomes through collective problem solving. We harness information, convene stakeholders and prepare action oriented leaders in an effort to act as an agent of change by empowering stakeholders. The Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program, which is formally called the, Queen, the Canadian Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Scholarship, and you can understand why we usually shorten that to QES, uh, is managed through a unique partnership of Universities Canada, the Rita Hall Foundation, Community Foundations of Canada, and Canadian Universities. This program is made possible with financial support from the uh, Government of Canada, provincial governments, and the private sector. The purpose of the QES program is to activate a dynamic community of young global leaders to create lasting impacts both at home and abroad through cross-cultural exchanges encompassing international education, discovery and inquiry, and professional experiences. Here at the McMaster Health Forum, we've had two different Queen Elizabeth Scholarship programs. Uh, our current one, which is our second program, uh, we were very proud to be selected as one of 20 Canadian institutions to host that second round of of scholars. Uh, and that began in 2018 and was scheduled to uh, run until the end of 2021. But due to certain circumstances, there was an extension for the program to the end of 2023. The focus of our current Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program is strengthening health and social systems. And our scholars who are participating in that program contribute to strengthening health and social systems to become part of our growing network of health and social systems leaders. Uh, on the screen now are some of our scholars from our original program, uh, which began back in 2015. We had 14 incoming scholars by the end of that program and three outgoing scholars by the end of that program. And we, a large number, as you can see, uh, 44 in total of outgoing interns as part of that program. Our current Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program, which is ending in December of 2023, we've had seven incoming scholars and 24 outgoing interns, and our two presenters today are part of the outgoing intern group. Our scholar presenter is Amy, who at the time of the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program was a graduate student in the Global Health Program at McMaster with a specialization in globalization and equity. Uh, Amy has experience on both qualitative and quantitative research projects with a particular interest in population level research and health systems evaluation. Uh, during Amy's uh, internship, she'd aimed to learn about the health system's challenges within the unique context of the Caribbean and to work towards implementing more equitable health care for all. Amy, over to you. Wonderful. Thank you, James. Um, hi, everyone. So today I'm just going to be presenting a little bit about my um, experiences as a QES scholar in Trinidad and Tobago. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Awesome, thank you. So a little agenda. Um, first, I'll talk about a bit about the um, CCHSRD, which is the Caribbean Center for Health Systems Research and Development. I'll talk a bit about my role there and what I did. Um, and then finally, I'll finish off with a bit of my um, experiences in the country, cultural experiences, and a summary of um, my insights, learnings, and takeaways. Next. Thanks. So for those of you who don't know, Trinidad and Tobago is a twin island country in the Southern Caribbean. They have a really diverse population from different waves of immigration as they were previously colonized, well, by many imperial, but um, the British colonization brought a lot of uh, immigration from um, West Africa and India. So it's there's also a lot of immigrants from Venezuela and other parts of the Caribbean, so it's a quite diverse um, country. The main language they speak there is English, um, but some communities speak Patois, which is a, a kind of French Creole. Next, next slide, please. Awesome. So I had the opportunity to um, 
intern with the University of the West Indies in St. Augustine, which is very close to the capital of Port of Spain in Trinidad. Next slide. And so the Caribbean Center for Health Systems Research and Discovery have um, five, or four main uh, functions, and they also have a National Health Research Conference, which they help to organize every year. So their first function is research execution. They help um, to bring forth health policy and health systems research. They create policy briefs, and they do this by collaborating with other universities, other researchers, and even policymakers and bureaucrats that um, need help looking for specific evidence on a certain topic that they are making decisions about. And so they are, their second function is knowledge translation. They um, very similarly help to create rapid response briefs and evidence briefs for policy. They um, convene stakeholder dialogues as well, all to help bridge that gap between research and policy and help bring um, insights from the research world into um, small, packaged, easy to read, easy to understand products that can be used by policymakers, decision makers, um, citizens, anywhere that um, could use that information. They also spend uh, a lot of time with health uh, human resources training and development. So they uh, train decision makers, healthcare workers, researchers, students, anyone who needs it really um, on evidence, how to find evidence, how to use it, um, how to integrate it into their decision making, and um, how to even develop others into finding this evidence and using it in their work. And their fourth function is citizen engagement. So this involves um, convening forums and citizen dialogues. It also involves community partnerships. So or like uh, with NGOs, for example, um, collaborating with them for uh, evidence briefs for policies uh, or collaborating with them on their research execution um, and just being a, a help in what we can to um, help them reach their goals by incorporating evidence. And lastly, so as I mentioned, they organize the Health Research Conference, and this is a huge collaboration, the first of its kind in Trinidad and Tobago to share health research findings from across the country. So they collaborate with many universities, the University of the Southern Caribbean, um, the University of the West Indies, the University of Trinidad and Tobago, um, and more, all to bring together the health research of the country into one large conference. All right, next slide, please. So my role specifically was in um, a few areas. I help to systematically search for evidence doing a kind of literature review for a grant proposal. And this grant proposal, um, I'll talk about a bit more in detail later, but it was with a community partner on um, perinatal bereavement. So stillbirths and miscarriages and how we could support um, families that have experienced this in the healthcare system through um, evidence. We also, had a culmination event for an evidence and foreign policy project called K2P, which I'll also go more into detail. Um, I also helped to plan for stakeholder dialogue and I helped to create and edit training materials. Um, and I helped prepare that and plan for a training for the regional health authorities, which are, I don't know, if you're in Ontario, you might know the LINs or, well, we used to have them. Now it's um, different Ontario health organizations, but these like smaller regional pockets of health administration, we help to create a pre presentation for them and training for them so that they can use evidence in their decision making. All right, next slide, please. So this is a picture from the um, culmination event of our Knowledge to Policy Mentorship Program. So the Knowledge to Policy a mentorship program was a part of the PEERS project. PEERS stands for Partnership for Evidence and Equity and Responsive Social Systems. So this program brought together partners from 13 countries to learn and support each other in promoting the use of research evidence and policymaking. So 
This uh, drew on a range of tools, including systematic reviews, rapid evidence synthesis, stakeholder dialogues, um, to provide decision makers with key evidence to address priorities. So the CCHSRD, where I was working, actually had previously gone to Lebanon and learned from the Knowledge to Policy Center there and their um, amazing researchers about um, bringing policy, uh, social policy, social systems, using evidence for um, those kinds of policies. And so when they came back to the Caribbean, the CCHSRD actually um, partnered with other institutions, such as in um, Guyana, and with other um, healthcare workers and decision makers to train them based on what they learned. So the um, CCHSRD mentored a few other researchers. And so this event was a way to kind of display that work um, to show the different um, uh, products that had been made, the rapid evidence synthesis and um, policy um, products that had been made. And it was just a great way to see all the work that had been done over the past few years and how uh, mentorship can sort of be multiplied around the world. Next slide, please. So where I focused specifically um, when I was working there was primarily on a grant proposal. So I mentioned earlier, um, this grant proposal was um, about perinatal bereavement care. So um, families that have experienced a miscarriage or stillbirth or any kind of um, death of an, an infant um, before the infant was born. And so for this, we developed a concept note for the Inter-American Foundation Grant. And this concept note involved um, systematic searching for evidence and then eventually writing a full scale grant, um, including budgeting and research methods and exact outlining exactly what we wanted to do for this project. And we partnered with an organization called Mama Toto. They are um, Mama Toto means mother and baby in their language. And it's a community based birthing organization that really spearheaded the use of um, midwives in Trinidad and Tobago and so they also wanted to spearhead this project but didn't quite have the research backing so we partnered with them and really helped to bring this grant to life. Um, the next area that I focused on while I was there was the evidence um, and form policy training material. So we helped to create some training material um, to teach the regional health authorities of Trinidad and Tobago about the retrieval, appraisal, and use of evidence. So this involved systematic searching, for example, for retrieval of evidence, um, appraisal, so evidence pyramids and grade to just assess like how strong are the conclusions that we can draw from the evidence that we found, and uh, the use of evidence. So learning how to do knowledge translation and decision making based on the evidence that was found. And so, um, yes, like I explained, this was for the regional health authorities. Um, and they do this kind of training for many other um, places in Trinidad and Tobago, many other decision makers. And I feel it would make a really big difference in bringing this training um, into everyday decision making. All right, next slide, please. Oh, yes. So this is a picture um, of one of those training sessions. So we haven't had a evidence-informed policy training for one of the ministries in our government, so the Ministry of Sport and Community Development. And they were learning how to create um, an evidence brief for policy about a particular social sector issue that they were working on. And so we were able to walk them through the whole process as part of the mentorship program, um, right from learning how to systematically search for evidence to um, appraising that evidence and using it for the particular social policy that they were working on. All right, next slide, please. Yeah, so not only did I have um, some very enriching um, work experiences, I also was able to um, explore the country a little bit and have some amazing cultural experiences. Next slide. Thanks. Yeah, so Trinidad and Tobago are like extremely um, diverse, amazing countries. So there's lots of wildlife. Um, so the first 
section there is the Karani Bird Sanctuary that I was able to visit with a few um, friends that I met in the dorms where I was staying. And we visited the mangrove swamp, which is a protected wildlife area. There are, um, mangroves are sort of endangered and disappearing because of climate change, but they're working hard here to keep this mangrove um, alive and thriving. We were able to see many, many species of birds, hummingbirds. In the picture in the back, it's a little small, but those are flamingos. There was a whole flock of flamingos. It was really amazing. Um, we were also able to travel to the um, twin island of Tobago and explore the lovely beaches there. And there were lots of um, opportunities for history and learning um, about Trinidad and Tobago. So that last square there on the right is um, Emancipation Day, which is a holiday celebrating the um, anniversary of the day that slavery was abolished. And Trinidad was actually the very first country to introduce this holiday and many other countries have followed suit. So um, this was an amazing festival. You see here me pictured with one of my colleagues who was dressed in traditional African wear and everyone, everyone was um, dressed in these beautiful, colorful, lovely patterns uh, representing their African heritage. And the building um, in the back there, that's the Red House, which is the, I guess, Trinidad equivalent of the White House. It's where the president lives and where um, the all the government official business happens. All right, next slide, please. Um, yeah, and there were lots of opportunities to make friends, um, lots of food, <laughs> lots of amazing diversity. Um, yeah, so I actually traveled there so alone, not knowing anyone, but I was able to make friends and create relationships that I think will last for a very long time. So I would encourage anyone who is maybe on the fence of going on a QES experience or traveling abroad in, in any kind of exchange experience, I would totally recommend it. Um, even if you're alone, you will definitely make friends. Next slide, please. All right, so just in summary, um, yeah, for someone considering QES, go for it. I had an amazing experience that was very enriching, both academically and culturally. And I learned a lot about the research landscape um, and policy landscape in a different country and how this was different and similar compared to Canada. And I learned about how evidence can be used to make more informed policy decisions. I also learned about myself um, and the world as I stepped out of my comfort zone and immersed myself in a different culture. Next slide, please. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the McMaster Health Forum and QES for um, this wonderful opportunity. And if any of you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. Um, and this picture is a view of the sunset actually from the dorm where I was staying. It was quite an amazing view. Okay, thank you so much.